Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So today in this episode, we are going to work on the seller flow. So far, user can create their account and log into their account. As per the buyer flow, user can browse the product, add to cart and make the payment and user can place the order as well as, right? So while we are making the payment, at that time we can see our payments are getting captured correctly in our Stripe dashboard. In the same here, in the place order, while we are placing the order right after successful payment, then the order is getting created here in the transaction service. A transaction log also it's getting captured. Uh, how much payment has been made or what is the payment actual payment log. So that can be helpful for our the seller dashboard, right? Where we can get a kind of sales report along with the numbers of item, how many numbers of item has been sold for a specific seller, right? So right now this buyer flow is almost complete. Only one thing we need to take care of from the buyer perspective. Once the order has been placed correctly, then make sure we are sending kind of email to the users by, hey, this is the product item you have ordered, all right? And this is, right now it is being under process or maybe delivery by adding some kind of status right there to send a kind of confirmation email from here. So which is we are going to handle in a kind of very tiny microservice that is called a notification service. That part is only pending here in the buyer flow. All right, so let's try to understand the seller flow first. Here, so far, we have the user account. Absolutely, it's a kind of buyer, but that's fine. We can convert themselves to seller, right? So wh what we need to do, we need to introduce some kind of feature that is called join seller program, where user can add some kind of information which is exactly necessary for, our, for becoming seller, right? That is what we are going to do. And another thing, what we are going to do, once they become the seller, we need to provide them some kind of feature that is called the seller dashboard, where a uh, seller can see their uh, created products and they can create the product, edit and delete product, all right? These are the whole, uh, the product control will be becoming uh, inside the seller. Right now, you can see like we can still browse the product, but these products are exactly orphaned right now because this product doesn't have any kind of seller or something, right? That is some kind of MVP we have just that we did uh, in earlier. But right now, it's time to like move all this product inside the seller, right? And once, once the user is joined the seller program, then they can see the list of the, all the seller products and they can see the sales and the sales report, which has already been tracked here while placing the order, the transaction log is getting generated and along with the order items also get, getting generated right here, right? So what do you need to do? While we are having the products, make sure like we are, each and every products have the seller ID. That is what we need to do in the, in the, in the product side, right? And another thing we need to do, while we are going to create the product and edit or delete product, that specific product must have to have a kind of authorization as a kind of seller. That is we need to introduce. I hope this uh, simple diagram uh, can help you out to understand what exactly going on, how these, uh, these two body flow, like in a buyer and seller flow going to be work simply, right? Let's deep dive into the source code. Here in the source code, let's go to user service. Here, inside the serverless.yml file, you can see our we have pretty much everything, right, for the users. Here, right after the place order, we need to introduce some kind of the endpoints, right? So let's add all those endpoints quickly. We have added three endpoints, join seller program, get payment method, and edit payment method. While we are joining the seller program, then we need to enter our bank account number as well as. In future, at any point, we can change our account number. So in that case, we need to give the feature for editing the payment method also, right? So that's why we're getting this, uh, giving this information like get payment method, where we'll be getting all the payments, related payment stuff, whatever we have added for here and that we will be get it here. And after that, we can edit that specific payment method by entering this one, this ID, okay? Let's add all these things to a kind of new handler, which is going to handle our seller program, right? Let's create a file here. Right, so let's add some code here. 
let's go to user handler and grab some piece of the code from here and seller handler so here uh, this is going to be our uh, join go here that is called join seller program right make sure like this specific name is identical to here in this handler seller handler right join seller program and this is going to be edit a get get payment methods and this is going to be edit payment method perfect so let's try to compare all this all this name uh, name of the function is identical or not so here uh, join seller program is fine get payment methods seller program uh, this is identical and edit payment methods uh, this should also have to be identical okay that's perfectly fine edit payment methods we are not going to use our user service here because our default user service is a kind of buyer right so if we add a seller also in the same service then in future it will be difficult for a segregate the buyer and seller in separate way separation of the concern let's try to create one more uh, service that is called our seller service here inside the service Right, so this is our seller service. Let's create a repository here. Uh, that is going to be our seller repository. Perfect. Let's try to add a couple of methods quickly. Perfect. So this is our seller service. We have seller repository as well as, and we have three functions that is called join seller program, get payment methods and edit payment methods. So let's try to hook up all these three methods in our handler right here. Uh, this is not going to be user service anymore. This is going to be our, our uh, seller service, seller service. And this is going to be seller repository, seller repository. Okay. And here, join, join seller program. And here are going to be our get payment methods. And here, edit. Yeah, edit payment. Right, edit payment method. That's cool. So now our Lambda function is hooked up correctly. While we are joining the seller program, right, at the time, we should have to have some kind of additional data as well as, right? So in that case, let's go ahead and create some kind of uh, migration here. All right, in the last migration, we have added two different columns to our user table, right? Let's go to user table here in the database. Uh, this address is going to be work perfectly because this address is needed for our seller. That is where we need to, we need to consider. And secondly, uh, shopping cart and card item is not necessary, but for the user, Right. Yeah, we have uh, all all these informations correctly, but uh, these 
uh, yeah, user type we can utilize, right? And uh, another thing is needed that is called the payment method because here you can see there is no any banking permissions uh, we have added, right? That is what we need to do. So let's go here and create one migration. So let's switch to our correct uh, uh, service. That is say the user service, yes. And make, create, create migration. And this is going to be our payment. Right? So this migration has been created for add the payment method table. So let's add some code here in the payment method down one. Then here, drop table payment method. Payment method. Right. And let's go to uh, the another file where we are going to add the migration that is called add payment method table up. Here we are going to add uh, some, some data. Let's try to add uh, the payment methods table, right? What we can do, we can just copy from here in the user table maybe, right? So let's go to user table. Yeah, let's grab all these things from here, user, rather than type it here. I'm, I'm gonna add it. This one going to be our payment, payment methods. And this is going to be ID, which is called Bixreal. And this is going to be our user ID. User ID, this is uh, big int big ID not null and after that this is going to be bank bank account and certainly it's going to be big INT any again big INT and and these are here uh, Swift code Swift code also it will be Parker 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 and payment type. Payment type will be will be Parker. The rest of all we can just keep it like this. All right. So what we have here, uh, this one we need to add uh, create index on the payment type. Payment method ID user ID and bank account number and Swift code and payment type. This verified is going to be not required. Here we can do one thing. All right, after this created at, updated at. Updated at. And let's try to create a couple of index. Let's call that's bank account number. And this is going to be user ID, payment type. Now add relation. And add relation with payment methods and Perfect. So we have created our payment methods table, right? So in this payment method table, we have a couple of fields that is called our ID, which is going to be our primary key and user ID. This is going to be our, our parent key where this payment method will be belongs to the user. So that is, that's why we have added this uh, foreign key here, right? And we have added bank account number and Swift code and payment type. These are bank account number going to be a big INT, right? And uh, Swift code, it's a kind of string. This payment type, it can be regular or it can be weekly, right? That That is, we can decide. And created and updated that it's needed exactly for uh, for keep track of that specific data where it's been updated or created, right? And 
why we have created this index because at any time you can from our admin portal we can just find it out like bank account number it belongs to which user maybe we can find it out right if you are creating the index then it will be faster to the get the data because it maybe have a lot of payment methods millions of payment methods it will be reside right there so from there if you need, if you need to find it out like hey let's try to find out all the payments which is weekly right then if you are indexing this one then it will it will it will help you to foster the query right so that's why we have added all these three index for these three fields and finally we have added this relation right um uh, one more thing we can do one more thing we can do let's go to the uh, down one here we have missed one thing that is called alter table Right, so we are just to try to check it out whether if that specific constant is exist then drop it, right? Then just delete this payment methods table. Cool. Now, uh, now let's go ahead and execute this migration, right? So here, uh, make migrate, make migrate. Perfect. So you can see uh, our migration has been executed successfully. Let's go to database. Right, check it out whether it is taken place or not. So I'm gonna refresh this one. So here it's nothing, and you can see uh, this payment method has been added right here. You can see our ID, user ID, bank account, and Swift code payment type, and created and updated. If you go to see the the structure, you can see all these indexes also has been created correctly. Perfect. So uh, in the next episode, what we are going to do, we are going to add some code right here, right, uh, where this specific handlers can handle, right. Here, the seller handler, we are going to add some code to join seller program and get payment method and edit payment method. So these are the three functions going to handle. And afterward, once this seller program has been handled correctly from our user service, then we need to go to product service and we need to add some kind of restriction and the move that the specific product creation stuff inside the user, right? So that is what we are going to do. All right, then see you in a bit. Bye-bye.